Good morning, good day, or good afternoon, wherever you join us. Welcome to our webcast, Seamless IoT Protection, How to Make Connected Gateways Secure. This webcast is provided to you by Cisco and our valued partner, Caramba Security. My name is Franz Walkenbach, and I'm glad to be your moderator today. I would like to introduce the speakers for today. First, welcome Edi Alma. So Edi is a uh, product marketing at Caramba Security. And then we have uh, Cipran Manea from Cisco. Uh, Cipran is a solutions architect, automotive. And I hand over to Cipran for starting the presentation, going through the agenda. Hi everyone. So I'll go over a brief Cisco introduction then discuss a bit about security threats and challenges in automotive, uh, focusing afterwards on secure gateway in the car, and why and how can hypervisor be a solution. Then I'll give the floor to Eddie from Caramba to tell us more about Caramba security, where he will focus on the X card and how this integrates with the secure automotive connectivity platform and then wrapping up with how everything works together by showing you a demo video. Let me first start with a couple of words about Cisco, which is, as many of you might know, the leading European operating system vendor for embedded systems. And our headquarters is located in Mainz in Germany, quite next to Frankfurt. The company was founded in 1991 and we have 30 years of experience in certification of uh, safety critical systems. I have to mention that um, Cisco is part of Thales Group since 2012. Our offering includes um, products like Pico S, which is a hard real-time operating system plus a level one hypervisor, Linux, which is our embedded Linux distribution, BSP for a large number of platforms, an official list of the BSP, you can find it on our website, certification kits and services. As well, PyQuest supports uh, the highest safety and security standards like SEAL4, ACLD, and common criteria EL3+. And with our software products and services, we target different industries and market segments like avionics, automotive, which is growing fast, um, defense, industrial, medical, railway, and space. Not to forget that we have a number of partnerships between which I can mention a joint venture with Vector that has been formed a couple of years ago to create an integrated platform for adaptive autosar with PyQuest. Why would customer choose Cisco? So at the organizational level, we have a broad ecosystem. We are ITAR free so no export restrictions. And I'm sure that uh, the success of our projects speak for us. When it comes to processes, we are in line with ISO 9001, ISO 27001 and common criteria. Talking about our products, I definitely have to mention first PyQuest, which has uh, support for MMU and MPU based architectures and it can host and has support for a large number of guest operating systems. Easy project to mention here, Codeo, uh, which is our IT helping on um, easy configuring your project. And Elino S is our own Linux distribution. On the certification side, we always strive to provide the highest levels as in ISO 26.26.2. ACLD for automotive, DO178C-A for airborne systems and equipment certifications, uh, common criteria EL3+, and so on. And we are working to increase this uh, regarding the common criteria to uh, EL4+. And it's important to mention that we are with our customers from the beginning uh, of the project till the end to uh, system architecture consulting, DevOps and integration, security and safety consulting, um, but as well product training, which is very important, and as well long-term support. To briefly mention 
some of our achievements in automotive market, like the project we worked on together with Magda, where PyQuest was used in a series production for assisted parking use cases. Another mention would be MIN, where PyQuest was again used in a production series in a telematic systems by hosting an AutoSAR and a Linux partition. And as well, we have a close partnership with um, other OEM and tier ones like Forge, Renault, Conti, and Stone Ridge, just to name a couple of them. Now, going into a more specific topic like security threats and uh, analyzing solutions based on PyQuest, let's take a classic example of a connected drone where the threat vector can come from so many directions like external communication uh, via Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, etc. Um, the device memory, uh, external mem memory like SD card or USB sticks, uh, uh, satellite data connection, um, and here I can mention the GPS, um, just to name a couple of op options that um, attackers or vectors that attackers might have over um, a connected device. And now let's shortly glance over a number of uh, features that would increase the security of a device like this by using PyQuest, which is secure by design to what is known as a whitelisting approach. But we'll see more about this in the next couple of slides. We can as well increase the security through a secure boot cycle and um, building a root of trust, providing a robust um, over the year software update and adding a firewall or even an intrusion detection system, as well as um, implementing features like uh, security event monitoring um, in field and following the approach of secured development via deterministic prevention or remote control execution and through Cisco platform with secure connectivity middleware. I have listed, as you can see, um, two common attack examples here, but I will just pick the first one to go a little bit more into details, which is the denial of service. To exemplify a bit, let's say that in a system with multiple partitions, uh, as usually is the case with PyQuest, you're using one partition as unsecure, for example, a Linux environment that has a big attack footprint. In this case, you can architect the system in such a way that the attacker only kills or uh, manages to penetrate the unsecure partition, but the rest of the system stays stable. Um, so this is known as um, the sandboxing method. Let's continue and analyze the example of a uh, secure gateway in the car. So as we all know, with the increased demand for more vehicle functionality um, is created the need for more complex electronics in the car with more and more issues that um, obviously require different network interfaces might be surprising for some, but uh, modern vehicles can have uh, over 100 DCUs connected over multiple network like uh, connectivities like CAN, LIN, FlexRay or Ethernet. And now the um, heterogeneous vehicle networks are designed using protocols with a wide range of uh, data rates. And here taking some examples, uh, LIN is usually used for low speed application like sensor and actuators uh, where CAN is used for uh, medium speed, speed application in, including most uh, ECU to ECU communication. And then we have um, as well wireless interfaces like 3G, 5G, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or even V2X. Um, so you already start to understand uh, now the complexity of a gateway which is like a hub that interconnects and processes data across these complex vehicle networks. It has to obviously provide physical isolation to route data between functional domains like powertrain, infotainment, telematics, or, or even other applications. So the main function of a gateway is to provide secure, seamless um, communication between 
network and ECUs, as well as bridging between the many internal networks of the vehicle and the internal network of and the external networks of the outside world. And now just to summarize the gateway capabilities required for a seamless communication, which would include things like protocol translation, data routing, firewall, key management, OTA management, just to just to name a couple of them. And the automotive market understood that the way to go by solving such a complex solution is to design it on top of a robust hypervisor architecture like PyQuest, for example. Obviously, the question why using a hypervisor and especially PyQuest, you can see on the right side quite a simple overview of the PyQuest architecture, where you have the PyQuest kernel as the first software component that runs after the bootloader. Then the guest environment are being loaded and started based on the predefined configuration enforced by the PyQuest system software. So in terms of scaling of platform and product development, as mentioned before, PyQuest is a real-time operating system and hypervisor in one product, providing a wide range of uh, guest operating system and environments like POSIX, um, Linux, um, Android, or Autosar, as well as providing you the um, ability of starting with uh, developing the features uh, for your application and then focus on the certification later on. And combining safety and security in a single product with mixed criticality. So talking about um, the hardware, to the hypervisor capabilities of PyQuest, you can run multiple guest operating systems on the same hardware. We do support most common hardware architectures like ARM v7, v8, x86, 64, and soon RISC V will be added to the supported architectures. And both MMUs, MMU and MPU-based controllers are supported by PyQuest. So Obviously, we address um, the vast majority of hardware used um, today in embedded and automotive. But we have as well integrated uh, special features like ARM Trust Zone or hardware virtualization for graphics. On top of that, PyQuest is um, helping you with the reduction of time to market by seamlessly hosting of third party application easy project configuration to our powerful IDE Codeo and ready to use certification artifacts and more. On our offering for automotive market, I have to mention first the fact that uh, PyQuest is already certified for ISO 262662 up to SLD. Through PyQuest, you can develop applications with mix safety, and security criticality levels that are possible on one system, ensured through safe and secure partitioning on our proven hypervisor technology, ideal coexistence with um, automotive APIs like Autosar, POSIX, PyQuest, Native, Linux, Android, providing fast boot functionality, which is a key functionality, which is a key requirement for the automotive project where you can bring up critical CAN communication buses first or other critical functionalities and then boot a complex uh, operating system like uh, Linux or Android. And PyQuest provides the infrastructure for implementing use cases like digital cockpit or ADAS or secure gateway enabled through our secure automotive connectivity platform um, to which I will come um, in more details a bit later. But as well, autos are classic and autos are adaptive thanks to, as mentioned before, to our joint ve venture with Vector. And I need to say that we are active members of Autosar and Automotive Create Linux. I have to mention that PyQuest provides a great baseline to take advantage of multi-core technology. And as a result, as you might think, reducing cost, uh, size, and power consumption in a system. So 
multi-core scheduling is seamlessly realized on a high abstraction level through what we call time partitioning schemes. As well, PyQuest itself is designed to satisfy any SMP and AMP needs. As previously mentioned through the PyQuest documentation, you'll be guided in the process of developing applications and build compliant and robust systems, but it's not only the documentation, we do offer support as well, technical support. Once again, with PyQuest, we provide the certification kits for system certification up to the highest level, like for safety, um, ISO 26262 ACLD, DO178C DALE, just to give other examples and more. And for security, we are right now certified for common criteria EL3+. As well as um, certifiable components such as file system network stacks. Now I would like to give the floor to Eddie from Caramba Security, where he can go in details over how Caramba products can protect your connected devices. Eddie? Thank you, Cyprian. So a few words about us, about Caramba Security. We've been established in 2016, and we have now 12 million units protected in production, over 70 projects uh, crossing certain different OS versions and seven different CPU architectures. And we're up to 42 patents, of which 22 were already granted, 20 are still pending, and quite a few awards from Forbes, from Gartner, and automotive awards. Automotive is at the forefront of what we do. We have some very impressive customers with Alps Alpine and Denso and Fiat Chrysler. And we also have customers outside automotive for IoT Edge and for energy with Itachi, with IFM, with Stanley and Solar Edge. And there's, of course, quite a few more. What we offer as products and services is a full suite covering the entire life cycle of automotive software for embedded IoT. And we help you comply with WP29 and open the black box that is so often the case in, uh, in this industry where you're getting components that you don't have full control of from suppliers way down the supply chain. So we help with threat assessment and risk analysis and we help with software composition analysis and binary scanning. We help with software integrity. XGuard is what we're going to discuss specifically today. We can help with the final V code assessment or penetration testing. And we can help with deploying actual vehicular socks using XGuard monitor, where we monitor very closely any attempt at cyber attacks, even if they're blocked successfully we still can bring that information to a central location. Why do we do that? If we're looking this year, there's been probably close to 10 different events in which vendors announced big sets of vulnerabilities, often in the communication infrastructure, because that's probably the, the one that always remains open as an attack surface. And the example I'm giving today is a couple of German researchers who use fuzzing techniques to find new zero days in a Linux package that is being used by Tesla, but also used by Genevieve called Conman, Connection Manager. And by chaining those two zero days, they were able to get full remote code execution. You can see the drone at the top here. The drone has an uh, access point on it with uh, the hardwire SSID that the Tesla is uh, willing to connect to. And from there, they were able to get full control of a park Tesla, open doors, uh, chain settings, uh, get full access to the infotainment system. This was done despite the fact that ASLR was enabled and uh, stack canaries were enabled. And if you'll be interested, we can discuss some more about the technical details of how this attack was done. But that's exactly the kind of attack that you don't want to happen when a car is already in the field, because by then it's probably a, a little bit late and it's very painful to fix this problem. 
Tesla, by the way, did it very nicely. They fixed it, but it took them a bit of time. So how do we avoid this type of attacks? We have a number of techniques. The first is application uh, whitelisting that would ensure that dropper attacks are not successful by uh, applying runtime protection to multiple types of objects and doing so completely automatically without requiring any interaction or any deep knowledge from the developer that is actually enabling it. And we'll show a demo later. We are able to block those dropper attacks. We're also protecting the files in the system against data modification attacks. So we can block modification of or deletion of those files. And uh, we can widely specific applications to uh, allow them to modify the files, but all the others will not be able to access. So even if somebody managed to get through a zero day and find a new vulnerability nobody knew about, they would still not be successful in taking over the actual device that is being protected. Last but not least, the technology that we've actually embedded into the development suite from Cisco to allow you to use it pretty much automatically is the protection against in-memory attacks that we call control flow integrity. When there are calls between different applications and different functions, we create a full map at compile time, and then we enforce only those calls to be able to run. So even if an attacker manages to find a stack vulnerability or a heap vulnerability or any other type of in-memory vulnerability that are in many cases over half the critical attacks, all of those would be blocked automatically at runtime and would be added automatically and with minimal impact to your code base without requiring writing any code directly. And Cyprian, back to you. Thank you, Eli. So to continue with one of the main topics of the presentations, now let's go over um, what the Secure Automotive Connectivity Platform is, which um, relies on the PyQuest hypervisor technology and offers base system that uh, protects the critical internal vehicle infrastructure from the outside world by means of firewalling and intrusion detection system. And you can already see in the diagram the building blocks of this. On top of that, the, um, the platform is prepared for common use cases such as an over-the-air update uh, mechanism and software lifecycle management. So as the name says it, it is targeted to the automotive industry, obvious, and it offers a ready-to-use system for all communication and transportation. And this includes applications like vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle or vehicle-to-infrastructure, as well as car internal communication. On top of that, we all know that the communication with the outside world requires deterministic and accurate response time that can only be achieved by means of an uh, underlying real-time operating system like PyQuest. So just to emphasize why we think that SACOP is essential in the automotive industry, think of the um, electric systems inside the modern car, which are able to take control over critical systems such as steering and braking gear and the safety and security of such functionality has to be obviously protected during the normal operation of the car, but at the same time against external unauthorized access. You can see here that not only the safety, but as well the security plays a big role in today's connected cars. So as you can see in the diagram, on the left side of the slide, the connectivity platform contains a gateway utilizing a robust routing system that implements a firewall and an IDS as mentioned already. Now, let's talk about another important aspect that OEMs are facing where 
consumers are asking for more and more features in the car. These requirements are growing year by year and um, the frequency of model changes and uh, the functionality update is uh, increasingly high. Um, and this usually requires the combination of existing software components with uh, completely new and uh, sometimes incompatible APIs. So maintaining a stable software basis while being able to follow the desire of the end user and customer is definitely a challenge, but this is where uh, virtualization comes into play. Um, as you might already think, the um, connectivity platform can be easily extended by adding a number of guest operating system and very important without compromising safety and security. But just to um, summarize, think of PyQuest as uh, the backbone of the connectivity platform as it can um, ensure the requirements of determinism and real-time security, very important, safety and virtualization. And as a type one hypervisor, it directly runs on, on top of the embedded hardware uh, to make the overall system as performant as possible. But not to forget the um, performance increase that comes through the multi-core support. And now let's see how simple Caramba CFI integrates with Codeo and uh, PyQuest build system. So on the right side, you can see a print screen of Codeo, the ID used for development and configuration of PyQuest and LinoS. As you look closer, enabling Caramba CFI for your project is as simple as enabling the appropriate option in Codeo and everything will be automatically taken care of in the background by the build system. If you think of people which would mostly use these features, which are the developers, would not need to acquire new programming skills for increasing the security of their application to Caramba CFI. Just a couple of words about um, Codeo, which is an Eclipse-based IDE with built-in powerful features like graphical remote debugging and remote application deployment, as well for dynamically analyzing your system. You can use Codeo for application and kernel tracing, user-defined trace events, or you can set triggers and event filters. Other features for analyzing and control would be static system analysis, remote system explorer, PyQuest monitor, and partition control. And some additional features worth to mention are health monitoring and hardware emulation. And this is definitely only touching the surface of what Kodo is capable of. Let's go into a bit more details and talk about one of the secure automotive connectivity platforms components, which is the update manager and how Caramba CFI helps with improving the security of the system. So as you can see on the right side, a simple block architectural diagram of this component where the entire related functionality has been split into three partitions, three partitions obviously for an improved uh, security design or architecture. So this is composed of two PyQuest POSIX partitions and one PyQuest native partition and each partition hosts part of the functionality that contributes to the update manager application. And all this has been built with Caramba CFI protection just by, as you've seen, just by enabling a switch in Codeo. But the update manager is for sure open to customers' preference solution. So if you have um, a preferred solution, you would be able to, I would say, easily replace it with, uh, with your preferred solution. But as shown here on the slide, it is integrated with PyQuest control API, meaning that you can have live updates, so no restart of the target, but as well, classic static updates with the restart of the target. And I have to mention that another important feature that you can build on top of PyQuest is fine-grained update capabilities like complete firmware update 
or updating only one partition or only one application inside the partition. And as mentioned before, without sacrificing the security of the system. So that's in a couple of words, the update manager, but for sure there is um, much more to say about it. Now I would like to give the floor back to Eddie. Thank you, Cyprian. So what we'll do now, we'll show you a recording of a video where we can show actually how the new feature helps. We can see, first of all, Codeo configured to build a non-CFI protected build of an ECU that is running ARM v7 on Quemu. Then after we build, we'll show a valid administrator connecting successfully, show an attacker trying to brute force the system with incorrect credentials and obviously failing. However, then the attacker attempts to exploit an overflow vulnerability by inputting a very long password and succeeding in getting access. Then we go back to Codeo, enable CFI, and rebuild the ECU. And once we do that, we'll run again the attack and show that the attack is no longer successful. This would give you a very easy way of visualizing the value that we're building here. So let's run the video and look at, first of all, a full build of the system. With Caramba CFI actually false, disabled at the moment. We're building the entire system and then we'll be running it, executing it, and we'll show an attacker, first of all, a regular admin, and then an attacker trying to connect to the emulated device. So you can see the build succeeding, and the real administrator connects with secret and gets access. That's okay. Now an attacker tries to connect with any, with an incorrect password and fails. So he tries again, and this time he tries to overflow password and gets access. This is bad. So what we'll do now is enable CFI and rebuild. When we do that, as you saw, without any code that is mandatory to add, just the configuration. And what we're getting is much better memory protection against heap overflow and stack overflow, much better than you'd get with ASLR or stack canaries. So the build is successful. And now we'll be running again the attack. The attacker is again trying to overflow the buffer. However, this time, they are not successful. The attacker is blocked without any additional indication and the system is safe. So Cyprian, what have we learned? Yeah, with PyQuest and, and secure automotive connectivity platform integrated with Caramba CFI, you get a robust automotive development platform with API compatibility for Autosar, POSIX, uh, PyQuest native Linux and Android. Another key aspect is the freedom from interference mechanism with regards to um, safe and unsafe or secure and unsecure critical functions. As well, very important to keep in mind that PyQuest helps uh, reducing time to market via included pre-certified components according to the highest ISO 2622 standards um, or common criteria EL2 plus or um, FIPS um, and as well pre-integrated security components such as um, secure boot, um, IDS, uh, TLS or certified file system. And through our partnership with Caramba, you'll get extra protection with Caramba CFI which is, as you've seen, seamlessly integrated with PyQuest and Codeo. Thank you.
So on this slide, you see the contacts either at Caramba or at Cisco. At this point, I would like to thank the presenters. So thanks a lot for your time and uh, have a nice rest of the day.